Okay, welcome back guys. We haven't started a video here in what feels like multiple moons. This is the OG spot though. Just got my swole on. And we're kind of doing a little impromptu range test of this new bike. Because this is a pretty far destination, about 21 miles round trip. We're about to head back home. And the first leg of the journey was 9.4 miles. This leg should be about uh, 12 miles, and we're currently sitting at 49.9 volts. Now, I can unequivocally say that the bike can make this journey. Uh, just for reference, there are two rather large hills along the way. Um, this is my third time making this journey. The first time I had severe range anxiety. I pedaled the whole time I made it home just fine. The second time I pedaled a little bit less. This time, I'm only really pedaling on inclines. And you guys saw what my voltage was after nine and a half miles. Let's see if I can get home with this new approach. But yeah, I mean, I'm loving this bike so far, guys. The BMX handlebars, they look good, they feel good. The only thing it's missing now, the bike, is more power. Okay, but I recently made a video that did pretty well on the absolute best hub motor you can buy for uh, your e-bike build. And I completely stand by that. And in that video, I go through what makes a hub motor good, in my opinion. Let's, uh, let's stay on the path here. But a major criticism I got is that, yes, those hub motors are pretty much the best, but they're expensive. So that's why this video is going to be about budget. So what budget hub motor would I buy for an e-bike build? Now, I'm not gonna completely rehash all of my logic and reasoning into what makes a hub motor good. If you want that, check out the previous video where I lay out my entire argument and I explain everything. Man, these uh, paths are a bit more busy than I would have liked. Luckily, I'm on a class three e-bike, or class two. Okay, back on topic. When you browse the Amazons for e-bike kits and hub motors, there's really not that much different between the budget brands at least. But I did come across one that has some minor improvements and they also have a pretty decent lineup and this company is called eBikeLang. They sell on Amazon and they also have their own website where you can go to and see all of the all of the variants that they offer. And the reason why I like this over the generic cheap one on Amazon is because I noticed on at least some of their models the controller they have uses waterproof connectors and the motor also has a quick disconnect waterproof connector on it and that's a huge deal if you ever get a flat which by the way it's going to happen at some point or just need to do maintenance on your back tire that is one of the biggest disadvantages of hub motors how it's a huge hassle to remove the back wheel but with a quick disconnect it solves that problem and it's very appreciated Also, by the looks of it, it appears to be the 9-pin connector that the buffeting motors use. I can't confirm this, it doesn't say it on the website, but just based off of the image, that's the connector it appears to be. And if that is indeed the case, that's good news, because it opens up uh, different controllers that you can plug it into, and just more options for modding in the future. Oh, by the way, uh, before coming on this ride, I did uh, increase the PSI in these tires because we're kind of doing more throttle. Um, so with fat tires, the PSI is between 8 and 20. So pretty low, that's why they're so cushy. So I filled both of these tires up to 20 PSI. Um, they're definitely more firm, but still very cushy. And I think that's contributing to the, uh, the better range here. So we're still at 48.4 volts, so basically 50% battery. And we tackled another three and a half miles. All right, what else about this company? So I also appreciated the diverse lineup of hub motors. Um, if I was to use one of theirs on this bike, which I'm still considering, 
Uh, I could do that because they have a fat tire uh, version with the rim already attached, so you don't have to worry about lacing the motor into a separate wheel. Uh, oh yeah. So are those just like a placebo? I've been told that once. So I mean, all in, these are pretty good, cheap uh, hub motor options. I think the kit in total is like 500 bucks for the, the fat tire one. I recently tested out putting a 165 millimeter shock on this bike in the rear linkage. And you know, it fit, obviously. That's why, that's one of the reasons why I like this bike because of the way the swing arm is. You can put essentially any size shock you want on it, you know, to a degree, because eventually the swing arm just becomes like vertical. But I think I can put the next size up which from what I saw is 184 millimeters eye to eye, and that'll give me an additional six millimeters of suspension travel. And especially if I want to run these tires at a bit higher PSI for efficiency, having a better shock in the back will kind of compensate for the, uh, the harder tires. So after I upgrade the power system and to make sure all that works, I think I'm gonna push my luck and buy that bigger shock for this bike and then eventually a new suspension fork up front too. Although that's a low priority because out of the box, this one works pretty well. And I'll stay on the trail system. Ah. Okay, so we've been pretty heavy on the throttle. We did five miles, 4.9, just about five miles. I gotta pay attention. There we go. And we're sitting at 47 and a half volts. And let's see if the motor feels hot. I don't think it will. It's about 75 degrees out now. Yeah, the motor is like barely warm. Now I'm fully aware that geared hubs, they don't transfer the heat super well from the internal stator to the outside shell. So the core of the motor is a lot hotter than what I'm feeling, but still there is a, a correlation. And if the outside is that cool, the internal temperature can't be bad right now. So, again, that just gives me the confidence to upgrade to 60 volts. I'm fully confident this bike can handle it. And in the winter time when I ride, I noticed that my other bike, the hub motor, never even got warm in the winter. So it's really just the summer I gotta watch out for if I want to over voltage this uh, motor. Oh, you guys wanna see this? This is a new little thing I discovered. I didn't know you can go this way, but you can. It involves a bridge. Ooh, I should take a photo of my bike on the bridge for the uh, Reddit e-bike thing. They love bridges. Ooh, where can I take the photo? It's kind of hard to tell that this is a bridge. We're doing it. We are doing it. Catch me on Reddit. Oh, that looks good. Okay, so now we're approaching the, the hills. So I'm gonna do a bit more pedaling when we're going up steep inclines, just to help out the motor a little bit. <laughs> Man, I just wanna rip through here. <laughs> it's like the perfect kind of weaving path. I've been seeing on the YouTubes that apparently there's like group rides in New York City with e-bikes. 
Um, if you guys know anything about this, like where do the people meet to organize? You know, there's like a Telegram group chat or something like that. Let me know. Because I would love to join one of those, make some videos for you guys, the group rides. I see a bunch of people making videos of, uh, of this content and I feel left out. And especially now with this bike, it's more compact than my giant mountain bike. So I can get on the train more easily. Because I have been to the city before. If you guys haven't seen that video, check it out. Thank you, thank you. And please be advised that the stop button is for emergency no, use. Thank you and have a safe day. That's like my best video ever. I think so. I went to the New York City with the Onyx on the train and it was quite the experience. Okay, but we're on the hill now. The first of two hills. This goes on for a while, it gets more and more steep. So I'm pedaling and I'm feathering the throttle. So I have like manual pedal assist. See, the thing with pedaling is my butt gets sore. It's not my legs. I got butt pain. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. I'm definitely losing some of the peppiness of the bike, which means the voltage is going down. So, I'm just about at the top of this hill. We're gonna do a battery check. So I was doing some pedaling, although, to be honest, it was mostly throttle. Okay. Oh, let the battery kind of normalize. Okay, we're sitting at 46 volts. It's not bad. We did a lot of uphill and 6.7 miles. So we still have about like five to go. And there's some downhill ahead of me and then some uphill again, and then I'm back. But in terms of temperature, yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still barely warm to touch. I can definitely overvolt this motor. 60 volts, no problem. No problem. And then that'll give me an immense amount of range. Because on AliExpress, I found a 60 volt, 20 amp hour, or like 19 point something amp hour, you know, down to battery, which is the style I want. So, you know, bolt onto the frame securely. I don't want another triangle battery. And it's only like five, 600 bucks for a 60 volt, 20 amp down to battery. So that equates to 1200 watt hours. My old bike with the same capacity, but 72 volts was 1400 watt hour, but it was a direct drive motor. So I think I should have similar range with this bike. And then this is gonna be the perfect bike, guys, I'm telling you. But this is it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you didn't, you're still watching. Appreciate the like, subscribe. Ow, that was my hand. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.